ब्रह्मचर्यवृतीदंडी सर्वेदातपंडित श्रीमद्विवेकोगी मचोदयद नमस्ते नमस्ते दीदी यु हेव बीन पार्ट ऑफ एन ऑर्गनजे विवेकानंद केन्द्र अंड विवेकानंद राक मेमोरियल कमिटी and uh, you had a wonderful childhood when you look back how has been your long journey starting from your childhood to till day i always feel that the greatest blessing that god can bestow on a jeeva is to place it in a very good enlightened family that had been my first blessing my father was a renowned scholar a judge man of literature my mother though not very educated she was a very very cultured lady who brought up her children with self confidence and faith in the almighty so i have nothing at all to complain about my childhood that is why i say it is like bande bharat train bande bharat train is it non stop i had my schooling in chitsu my hometown graduate education in ernakulam another major town in kerala msc in the capital city of kerala trivandrum university college and then i took off to do my phd in madras university chennai after that i had two years to spend as a professor of botany in on college in tirupati then two years as a post doctoral fellow in the institute of microbiology at the ukrainian academy of sciences soviet union then returned to india in 1970 till 1982 I was a scientist microbiologist in the Indian Agricultural Research Institute New Delhi. In my very early childhood maybe when I was 10 or 11 my father brought a picture of Swami Vivekananda and placed it in our drawing room. I don't know it may be a divine will looking at that photo I, <clears throat> I felt very much enchanted by that appearance of swami ji and his personality suddenly out of me came an expressive desire that if some day were alive i would have gone behind him as a child i said something but i forgot all about it sort of sort of forgot but some day did not forget it that had been my great blessing in all these studies all the experiences i had i always felt his presence within me if i took any wrong decision or wrong direction immediately from within came a call this is not what you want this is not what you want so immediately i could steer away from that so when i was in delhi I think it was in 
that the Delhi unit of Vivekananda Kendra celebrated Vivekananda Jayanti and the great people on the stage were Mani Egnaji Ravide, the founder, president of Vivekananda Kendra and Vivekananda Kendra of Memorial. Then Puja Swamiji, Vivekananda Chinmayanda Ji Maharaj and then Acharya Kribalani. I thought it was a very grand occasion to listen to these three stalwarts and the events. I think it was in Bhavan Delhi, Delhi, somewhere. And after the program was over, I just casually walked up to the Vekanda Kendra stall, chatted with the secretary and others who were there, conveying my desire to be part of the Vivekananda group in Delhi because I am so much devoted to Swami Vivekananda. I made myself a patron, 12 rupees a year or something like that. And then they immediately, they were very happy to have me with them and I became a part of the Vivekananda group that gave me occasion to know more about the Vivekananda Rock Memorial, Vivekananda Kendra, come direct contact with Egnaji Ranade. More important, he started speaking to me about the spiritually oriented service mission, Vivekananda Kendra. And recognizing my deep surrender to Swami Vivekananda, he started tempting me sort of, oh, why do you want to waste your time looking through a microscope? You can come to our organization. Everything you want will be available there. Materially, you will not suffer. Emotionally, you have a big family as big as India. And then what greater science than Vedanta? So why do you want to waste your time within the confines of this agricultural laboratory? That started a new thought process within me. There is a possibility of taking up Swamiji's work. And when another added attraction was, it was not a sannyasi order where you have to shave off your hair and uh, wear ochre clothes. It was just like any ordinary person. Mentally you are a sannyasi, but outwardly there is no change in you. Only thing is, you lead, you lead a very disciplined life. So that attracted me because my mother never liked me uh, to see me as a sannyasi. So that was there deep in my mind. Otherwise, after my MSc, I would have joined the Ramakrishna Sarada much in Trichur. But because she was against it, I just kept away. But this was a new possibility. You can work, but you don't have to be a sannyasi. Externally, then you don't have to be a sannyasi. So that thought started maturing within me. And by 1982, when Mandi Agnaji Day was having some health problems, he came to Delhi. I often used to visit him and he started impressing upon me more and more the need to join Kendra. Finally, in 1982 March, I resigned my job as a microbiologist in the Indian Agricultural Research Institute 
and went to Kanyagumati. First, he made me one of the joint secretaries. And then, after an year or so, when the committee felt his health is failing, they wanted to have a new position of a working president. To my great surprise, Agnaji suggested my name. So I became the working president and after Mani Agnaji's passing away, the committee unanimously requested me to take over the presidentship of Vivekananda Kendra and Vivekananda Kendra Rock Memorial. Much to my bewilderment, I must say, because I never expected, I had no organizational background or capacity or anything. So it was as though Swamiji has decided about it. Agadaji actually he used to tell me, it is not I who is calling you, it is your Guru who is calling you. That is how he tightened the screw in his request to me. So from 1982, after Agnaji's passing away, till 1995, I had the great blessing to be the All India President of Vivekananda Rock Memorial and Vivekananda Kendra, which gave me, gave me wonderful opportunities to spread Swami Vivekananda's message throughout India. 1992, we re-enacted Swami Vivekananda's Parivrajaga tour. We traveled from Calcutta to Kanyakumari, 22,000 kilometers in 347 days with 50 volunteers and nine vehicles. To the extent possible, we visited all the towns and important places where Swamiji during his Parivrajaga life had gone and spent few days, met people and it was on 25th February, December 1992 that we came to Kanyakumari. I was one of the few who could be the part of the whole trip for all the 347 days. Others will come join for a particular space, particular time, particular region, because they had their own charges of particular regions. So like that, it was a very, very great blessing which Swamiji bestowed on me. In 1993, when the world celebrated the centenary year of the Chicago Conference, I could be present at the Mr. Hindu Persons program at Washington, the Centenary Committee's program at Chicago, and Ramesh Mission's program at Calcutta. And very, very, very um, deeply fulfilling experiences in Swami Vivekananda's life, there have been 10 occasions of centenary celebrations, starting from his birth centenary at Calcutta in 1963, till his departure Samadhi at 2002. And I had the great blessing to be part of all these 10 celebrations. So unless a Deva the Yoga is there, such a thing is unimaginable. So that is why I said 
it was like the one day Farad Express. No stop. Starting from my commitment to Swamiji standing before his photo till today as the director and chairman of the Vekanda Kendra Vedic Mission Foundation at Kodunilur, Kerala. I had absolutely no full stop anywhere. Comma, semicolon, like that. Today, it is again a great honor that the IYA feels that I should be one of the persons who should speak about women's empowerment. Let me thank the IYA for the great honor bestowed on me. Any specific incident that inspired you to join Vivekananda Kendra and its activities? The incident I just mentioned, you know, that I was at a... I, I didn't know how to go further when I took up the job at Delhi. But this attending the Vivekananda Jayanti celebrations and they requesting me to join the Vivekananda group there, that was, I don't think it is an accident. It is as though it was all sort of decided and planned for me. Vivekananda Kendra's uh, the path of action is Karma Yoga. Does it differ from the other paths of yoga like Bhakti, Jnana and Raja Yoga? For a person who considers life itself as a yoga, as a sadhana, that there is no difference between the four. One leads to the other, leads to the other, to the culmination. So in a way, there is no difference as far as the goal is concerned. In the marga, in the path to reach that goal, there may be slight differences. For example, we'll start with Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga, as the great Ramana Maharshi has said, this is for the mental purification. What is impure in our mind? That may be a question at this point to answer. The greatest impediment to the expansion of our mind to our growth and evolution is the deep-rooted attachment to oneself, I, my, mine. These are the three facets of the ego which goes on pulling the human being and refuses to release him to grow and expand further. So Karma Yoga, where you start from your own work, the work which you do, the various activities in which you are taking part, that is the, the very first foundation. They allow you to stand on the very foundation and then reach out to the higher aspirations. Our work is to be slowly, slowly transformed into an offering to God or a yajna or a sacrifice so that slowly I, my mind are eliminated. So when you do that, what happens? When a bud opens up into a flower, there is no I, my mind there. 
So automatically it comes out and opens its petals to the atmosphere. Fragrance comes to it. Honey gets secreted in it. Lot of bees are attracted to it. Human beings come and pluck it. Sometimes if it is blessed, it finds a place in a garland made for the deity in a temple or made as a flower offering. So in that way, when we purify ourselves, each and every thought, word and action of ours take a different route to travel. It doesn't travel inside into I, my and mine. It starts tra taking a journey towards that great power which controls the universe. Almighty God, the divinity, whatever way we may describe it. So that way, Karma Yoga is simple, elementary, practical, but at the same time very beautiful. How it is beautiful, we have to watch our own mothers scrutinize their lives where there is no I, my and mine. So the life itself becomes a flower offered to the Almighty. So that is Karma Yoga. In what way differs from Bhakti Yoga? In Bhakti Yoga, more importance is attached to your mental vibrations. Whether it is centered down again into this I, my, mind, or it is taking off to a higher level, recognizing an almighty God's will, divinity around. So slowly, slowly what happens? Purification again starts at the mental level and we sort of effortlessly evolve into a bhakta. Bhakti is very, very enchantingly beautiful yoga. It can add to the beauty and harmony in a society. Like all our bhaktas, you know, all the bhaktas. Where it is Mirabai, Kabir, Surdas. And in our own Kerala, there were so many. They have all been able to purify the society around them. The minds of the people got elevated. Wherever Sri Ramakrishna went, the group of people who were around them, around him, they had a changed perception of themselves and of the world. So, Bhakta has great contributions to make, not only for his own evolution, but for the evolution of the society also. Same with Karma Yoga also, but Bhakta is a more beautiful phenomenon. That's what I feel. For a person from a non-spiritual background, uh, how he can develop this Bhakti Yoga as a path to progress? Instead of his going straight to Bhakti Yoga, he must first know what is Karma, Bhakti, Jnana, etc. What is Yoga? Suddenly he can't go and take a ticket to Bhakti Yoga Paradise. No. Everywhere we have to start with our mind. Our mind is the instrument which we have by properly utilizing which we can either become a Karma Yogi or a Jnana Yogi or a Jnana Yogi or a Jnana Yogi. So straight away 
become a bhakta or tomorrow onwards I am become a bhakta. That is not possible. So when your mind purification starts and you start recognizing the divinity around, but that is not possible by going to college or universities or somewhere like that. Satsangatve and Sangatam, Shankaracharya reminds us, go on listening to beautiful lectures on bhakti, on gods, on divinity, on God, Almighty and all that, our Hidihasas and Puranas, then slowly our mind start feeling. I sometimes, I feel, our parents were responsible, especially the mothers can inculcate in their children this bhakti bhava. If they are careful in bringing to the child's imagination our wonderful heroes like Sri Krishna, Sri Rama and others, so that the child's mind get enchanted by these our great uh, gods and goddesses and uh, their avatars, then slowly you feel, no, I must combine my life with a little bhakti also. It may change my daily routine. I shall spend some time in thinking of God, praising Him or reading some of the Puranas, etc. Or I will start listening to some discourses somewhere. So like that, slowly he can change into, adopt some of the bhakti bhava unto himself. The surrender <coughs> is, uh, uh, surrender's significance in the path of bhakti yoga. How do you? What exactly is meant by surrender? What is it you have to surrender? You should first recognize that the I, my and my which I hold as the most important part in my life, the egocentric personality, one should understand it has no value at all. And whatever the ego decides for you, you will find it never happens even if it happens. It was not as beautiful or rewarding as you were thinking. There was some lacuna somewhere or other. It did not bring me so much of happiness. I was thinking, getting a good job, good position, I will be happy. But then I find there was so much of tension, so much of unhappiness in that field. So, in bhakti as well as in every other, what to surrender is this I, my, and my. Ego should not have any part to play in our life. If you really want happiness and tension-free life. See, take for example, somebody is scolding you. Somebody is speaking in love. You. There are two ways of reacting to it. You can immediately react to him in the same way, call him bad names or um, some quarrel with him. But there is another way. You just think, whom was he insulting? You will find it was only the ego who was getting insulted. Because you are Atma, nobody can touch it. Nobody can touch it. That is pure. The Sri Krishna in the second chapter makes Arjuna understand that, you know, very in the few stanzas. Ache, Dhyoyam, Adha, Dhyoyam, those stanzas. See, the real self in you cannot be touched by another. Nobody can insult you, injure you, or harm you. So, Ninda, Sudhi, they are all just our foolish ideas. Nobody can scold you or bring bad name to you unless you succumb to it. So, be steady in the awareness of this 
self within capital S the self within and remember all the other fascinations and these are all there they belong to the world of ego if you are able to maintain that then you will have absolutely no worry or anxiety or dukha or nothing in your life for a person who wants to uh, take up the path of jnana yoga how he can uh, cultivate this uh, self inquiry and the introspection which are basic necessities according to our bhartiya tradition it is a step by step upgradation of your mental faculties to reach up to the jnana yoga as we mentioned earlier purify your mind purify your activities purify your feelings try to get rid of your ego and allow your mind to be stationed most of the time within the mind not getting distracted through the attractions which are placed before you by the five indriyas sabda sparsha rupa rasa ganta they are referred to as robbers the robbers who rob you of your divine blessedness they are the ones look at that that lady is so very beautiful i wish she belongs to me oh look at that ornament how would i look in that Oh, look at that place! If I could go there and spend some time, see, like that, we allow your our mind to very easily, without any restriction, to flow out of our indriyas, attracted by sparsha, sabda sparsha, rupa rasa ganta, and finally we find when they return back. they bring the impressions of these and try to tell you that was beautiful that was very really nice charming tasty but you find they are nothing at all they are there within few seconds they are all gone we can't carry the pressure of listening to the music that particular sensation we can enjoy the nanda but we can make it part of our being by seeing the divinity in that the person who is singing the divine capacity which has come out in the form of that song the divine capacity which has come in the form of his painting the divine capacity of a doctor which he has brought in his surgical or in his treatment see that way all these even the five indriyas which are now becoming the robbers we can make them our friends probably that is why krishna says in the bhagavad gita udhare atmanatmanam natmanam avasade atmaiva khyatmano bandhu i can make all these five my bandhus my friends atmaiva ripur atmane if i am careless these five become the robbers who distract and take me away from my goal of life so we must start with satsanga through satsanga develop nishanga This sangat way, the mohatvam, your attractions for the world outside is reduced. The mohat way, the chalatvam, more and more you get concentrated on the central fulcrum of your being, the atma within. This chalatvam way, even more. This practice of viveka, how? it can contribute for the spiritual evolution in the path of gnana yoga viveka has a great part to play in human life at every stage not only in spiritual life everywhere the teacher yama tells the student nachiketa look my boy in front of every person there are two pathways that of shreyas and prayas shreyas takes you up and up and up onto your divine self but this prayas drags you down and down and down till 
you lose yourself. So the, the Viveka is that great capacity, God-given capacity within our mind by which I can decide whether I want to go through this path or that path. Whether I want to go to the, what's it, a bar attached hotel or whether I want to go into a good uh, vegetarian hotel, we can decide. Whether I want to see some rubbish cinemas or whether I want to go for a satsanga. There are so many stories, you know, there is no time for all that. Otherwise, any number of stories are available in our Vidyasa and Puranas which specifically show this path. Who takes, uh, how the viveka of a person takes him towards the right, who a viveka takes him, uh, deviates him from his this thing. So viveka is a quality which we should develop. We should develop in children also. We must tell them, look, this is bad for you. This is good for you. Take this. Too much of ice cream is not good for you. Too much of chocolate is not good for you. That is how we start, you know, with the children. Too much of sleep, then we go next. Too much of play also is not good for you. Too much of sleep is not good for you. Don't go on eating this, that and everything that is not good for you. Try to eat what mother cooks for you yes, with full of affection and love and understanding. So like that, we should develop in the children this capacity of Viveka How all the parts of yoga, they complement each other. And can they be practiced simultaneously? For ordinary persons like, say, myself, it is not difficult to take up just one path. If you are a sannyasi or you have totally come away from the worldly life, probably it is possible. But when we are living a life, whether it is as a life worker, or as a, uh, a good, noble member of a family. It is not possible for us to practice just one. But at the same time, we can have all of them and use them to enlighten our day-to-day -day activities. That is very beautiful. Because you start disciplining yourself in your daily life. The hours you spend on such and such and such and such things, we can bring about an order in that, a timetable like thing. So, when you start getting up early in the morning, take your ablutions according to the ritualistic injunctions. Now, when you get a piece of you say Karagri, Vasudhi, Lakshmi, Karamadhi, Saraswati, Karamuli, Govinda. Prabhadi, Karilakshadam, or Samudravasne Devi. So these are the things which we can impart to the children and make them effortlessly part of their being. See, there is so much of environmentalism and all that, you know, here you see, so simply. So this earth, oh earth, forgive me for touching you with my feet. Oh water, you are really the water from all the beautiful uh, rivers in our country. So these thoughts when we start implanting in the children, see what a beautiful expansion their mind will have. So we start bringing a rhythm into our lives. <coughs> then. We can take them to the temples, we can make them daily do some prayers in the morning before they go to school. So all that becomes part of the Bhakti Yoga or bringing the awareness of God into your life. Let us not use big, big terms, bringing the awareness of an Almighty into their lives. Essentially it is Bhakti Yoga, but children may not understand that. So we will bring them in slowly. When we put the children to sleep, we are singing the glories of Krishna. They start imagining about Krishna. 
ರಾಮ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ದ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಮಂತ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ನೌ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವೇ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ಲೆಸ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಎನ್ ಲೈಟ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಎನ್ ನೋಬ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಆರ್ ಅವರ್ ಸರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅವರ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಎ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಈಸಿ ಟು ಡೂ ಮೈ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಪ್ರೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಮೈ ವರ್ಕ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕಂಜೀನಿಯಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಪೇಶೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಪೇಶೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ ಹೆಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಪೇಶೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ವಿಚ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ಮೀ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನ್ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪುಟ್ ಇಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸೊ ವೆರಿ ಈಸಿ ಟು ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಅವರ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎ ಯಜ್ಞ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಟೀಚರ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಮದರ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಡೂ ದಿ ಕುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕುಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದರ್ ಓನ್ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಹೆಲ್ತಿ ಅವರ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಿಸೀಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಲವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ದೇ ಪುಟ್ ದಿ ಟಿಫಿನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಸಿ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ವುಮನ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಮದರ್ ದೆನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ಆಫೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಅವರ್ ಡೇಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಓವರ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಎನ್ ಅವರ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ಇತಿಹಾಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪುರಾಣಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗಝೀನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗೀತಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರತಿಷತ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ so they are all so naturally get integrated there is no separation oh morning i am a karma yogi evening i am a bhakti yogi then i become a raj yogi these are all foolish interpretations every act thought word of deed of ours can be converted and put into each one of this packet when i control my mind against a temptation you are a raj yogi when i elevate my mind to a higher level of knowledge you are a jnana yogi when you convert your work into an act of service considering yourself as an nimitta instrument you are a karma yogi and when you sing the glories of the god you are a bhakti yogi so where is the question of demarcation so in our way we can harmoniously combine everything in life at the same time if you want to specialize in something okay there is a very scope for that also so indian spiritual heritage is a magnificent contribution of our rishis for the total development of human being what advice would you give to someone trying to choose the most suitable path of yoga so you must sit with him and talk to him and see his mental faculties when the liberations whether he has gone through any bad experiences or whether he is eager to acquire some goodness a noble as himself in his life so we must have a sort of discussion with such a person and then decide to which category he fits into it for the modern person whose lifestyle is different how the principles of karma bhakti and gnana yoga can be integrated into so as i was saying earlier there is nothing on a modern man or a old man earlier man etc because it is in the mind of the man which is important there is no old or there is no young or there is no age in that it is in mind which is important where is the question of modern man or modern modern man is tempted modern man's mind is tempted it is more uh, outside oriented that is all you can say so such a person you will have to we have discussed it all in all these answers so in surely such sangatve in sangatam let him come in contact with some good people organizations like our vivekananda kendra and so many ashrams are there somebody can take a fancy to go there and talk to a sanyasi or to a worker or to a yoga teacher 
and then get relief and then suddenly realize, oh, this has brought me some relief, let me go there again, they can start with yoga, they can take part in their service activities, they can take part in their discussions and seminars and things like that. So at every level it is possible. Only thing is, mentally you should be ready to... Can you share some your personal anecdotes of experiences that highlight this transformative power of all the yogas? Like any other human being, I was also enchanted with all that is around us, you know. I was not in any way different from anyone. But slowly, listening to... My father was very, very... Uh, compelling us to go for satsangs. See? Even as a child of six or seven, when he goes for some evening talks of some great sannyasis or somebody like that, he will drag us all. We should also go and sit. And we may catch, I remember, as a child of seven or eight, I went for a prabhashanam. And there, a great sannyasi was uh, reciting a sloga from Narayaniya on Sri Krishna. I was so enchanted by that. Then I came back and asked Father, what is that sloga? I would like to get it by heart. Whereas then immediately took up Narayaniyam book and showed me. And then at the age of eight, I started reading Narayaniya with the meaning. So it is there. Uh, it is up to each one of us to decide. It was my, as I said earlier, you know, it was my good fortune to be born in an enlightened family. We had only good books to read, good things to see, and these TVs, radios, etc. were not available at all. We have some evenings or some songs in a way, or some temple functions to attend to, or some saptahas or something like that. So there was going to theater and seeing films, etc. was very, very rare thing, some bhakta prahlada or nandanar or some such uh, bhakti stories will come, then only we will go to see a picture, like that it was. Only by listening to such people, as I said earlier, Swami Ranganada Andhiji Maharaj, Chinmay Andhiji Maharaj, then it a very practical sense, recognize here and day. They all brought the change within me and I knew what is Shreyas and what is Prayas and used my Viveka to take up the Shreyas. What more can I say in this? The personal anecdotes. All the anecdotes which I have to remember is connected with uh, my own expansion from a good-for-nothing good girl into a good woman, I would say, isn't it? So that the IYA feels that I should be interviewed. So that is a great blessing indeed, isn't it? So I will speak only of the spiritual experiences. One of them was my listening to this great man as a child and getting enchanted by Sri Krishna and start reading Sri Krishna stories and all that. Second, while I was working in uh, Delhi, uh, Mani Agnaji, I said, you know, always used to tell me it is time for you to give up and give up. And naturally the thought came to my mind, oh, maybe I should start thinking in this direction. My contact with Agnaji, I always summarize <laughs> as that between Sri Krishna and Trivakra. No, Sri Krishna meets a silent tree who has three turns twists in her body. So, <laughs> Agnaji rectified but that three are there for all of us, right? it is not for me alone. If we deeply analyze ourselves, we will find these three curvatures are there in all of us. 
What is the first one? Our material comfort. I must have money, I must have LIC, I must have fixed deposits, I must have a lot of money in the bank, a good house and a steady income. For what? For the 60 or 70 years you would live to look after the worst of this body. To take care of this body you need so much of money, crows and crows. I can understand why people make black money and all that. Where is the need for that? What are you going to do with so much of money? That is the thought that comes. So Elvaji said, why do you want to earn a few rupees here and there as your salary? See, in Vivekananda Gendra, all your needs will be taken care of, but you don't have to touch the money. My goodness, is it possible? Yes, every want of yours will be taken care of. So that curve, based on money earning mental fascination, that he cut asunder, he straightened it out. Second for every one of us is our emotional attachments to family, husband, wife, father, mother, children, this, that. Ignaji told me, see, whole India is going to be your family. Wherever you travel as a member of Veka and Kendra, they will be a house for you. They will be brothers, sisters who will look after you. And in Veka and Kendra, I have men and women. They are going to be your children. It is your responsibility to love them and they look after them. So what more do you want? It's just few people at home. They are there. Today they are in good terms with you. Tomorrow you don't know what will happen. Why do you want to waste your time for that? Yes, true. The second curve was straightened. Then there is a third curve connected with Jnana Yoga. <laughs> All your intellectual capacity. I should become a scientist, well known as a microbiologist, all over the world. Let me try for that. Ragnaji said, you want to concentrate on the world of microbes or concentrate on the world of human beings, their sufferings, their anxieties. What is this science? What is Vedanta? Haven't you read Vedanta literature? And what is this science? Science is a search for unity. Swamiji says, you know, science should be a search to find out the oneness in the whole universe. So Vedanta is going to be a science for research and study and uh, discussions. Why do you want to waste in this? So the third curve was also straight in that. So that is my another great experience. With all that, I decided to leave. I asked Rangalada Nishi Maharaj, Maharaj, what about me leaving my job and everything and going to Vekanta Kendra? Then he said, no, not now. Then he said, see Lakshmi, our whole society is like that of a leper's body, full of wounds, pus, blood. But it cannot be left like that. It should be cured. For curing even a leper, there has to be some living tissues here and there. If our society is a leper's body, we should have some points where some living cells are there. Living tissues are present. I want you to become a living tissue. Whether it is in Indian Agriculture Institute or your home front or your society or your laboratory, be a living tissue, be a karma yogi, be a bhakti yogi and be a tasmad yogi bhavarjuna. Sri Krishna tells Arjuna, you know, tasmad yogi bhavarjuna. If you want peace of mind and happiness, become a yogi. Krishna did not say become a raja yogi, become a this. Yogic attitude is an attitude of mind. An expansiveness you achieve in at your mind, mental level. Physical all included in that. So these are some of my very precious thoughts which I cherish 
concerned with the yogic empowerment of women which we are considering today. This year, the International Yoga Day theme is specifically Yoga for Women Empowerment. Uh, on promoting women's well-being and advancing global health and peace. What is your... Uh, this is a very, 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 a very beautiful, enchanting and uh, useful topic which cannot be confined in a question and answer session. And this is the topic on which I have spoken already in the morning for an hour. I would request our listeners to listen to that talk of mine. One more question is there. How do these paths of yoga lead individuals towards self-realization or moksha? What of it we have seen and how of it? In our Indian tradition, moksha is almost the final stage of man's emancipation. That may or may not be possible for ordinary people like us. But Swami Vivekananda has introduced a new word. He said, by one or more or all of them and be free. Freedom. Freedom from thraldom, freedom from diseases, freedom from unhappiness, freedom from misunderstandings. So, if you want to free yourself from all that, these yogas will be helpful. I think in the present day situation, uh, looking for moksha is a too, too big a step. Uh, it's like all of us cannot climb the Everest. Let us be very clear about it. But still there are something like that, Arunima with his uh, one foot she uh, climbed the Everest three times or something like that. But that is all very, very rare things. But for normal human beings like that, integrating these four yogas into our life with keeping a freedom, freedom from anxiety, freedom from diseases, freedom from, uh, what to say, all the tensions in life, keeping that as our aim, I think that itself will be a great, great gift we will be giving to ourselves. And whenever I talk to yoga students, I say, yoga is the greatest gift you can give to yourself. Whether it is in a karma yogi level, okay. Jnana yogi level, bhakti yogi level, raja yogi level, whichever level you are, that is the greatest gift you can give. In our own experience, in Vivekananda Kendra over the last 40-45 years, thousands and thousands of people we have seen getting rid of so many anomalies in their lives through yoga. Getting a new personality, developing a new personality through yoga. So for women, that is one of the best ways and the different facets of that yogic expansion I have spoken in my morning lecture. Thank you, Devi, for spending so much time and sharing your thoughts on different aspects of karma, bhakti, jnana, and rajyoga.